one human family on to Mars one human family asteroids one human family Jupiter one human family Saturn's rings one human family Uranus one human family Kuiper belt one human family Pluto one human family Interstellar one human family Back to Earth 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 one human family Good morning and salutations Ladies and gentlemen Gentlemen and ladies Pets and friends Neighbors and strangers, Mike Mongo, pow, 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 pow. My name is Mike Mongo, astronaut teacher, and you are student, astronaut student. Hello, student. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures. Welcome to Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures. You made it once again. Give yourself a high five right now. Okay. Pow, pow, pow. I love traveling through the solar system with you every morning when we start this show. That's one of my favorite things. And we came up with that song just for you. To the world, one human family. You know who Usain Bolt is? Did you ever see him do To the World? He does it like this. Like this, he goes. To the world. No, he goes, to the world. I was dab I was dabbing. <laughs> to the world. Usain Bolt. I love that. So, greetings and salutations. It's fun to sing that. I, I like to say hi to you. Actually, I'm super excited every time I see you. It's really awesome that you're here. 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 We're going to do something so fun today. I don't know if you remember when we sent a postcard to Jim Bryden's team from NASA, but you know what we're going to do today? Today, we are sending a postcard to Blue Origins Club for the Future, and your postcard that you send to Blue Origins Club for the Future is going to go up to space, it's going to come back, and it's going to come back to you. You're sending a postcard to space, and it's coming back to you, courtesy of Jeff Bezos and our friends over at Blue Origin. This is a great show. This is a, this is a great episode of Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures. You're sending a postcard to space. Can you believe it? Does it even sound imaginable? Oh, by the way, I got to tell you something. This is so cool. I got to tell you something. Listen to this. Last night, I had a dream this morning. This morning, I had a dream. Like I wake up and, you know, like I guess it's, if, if, it's, if you're sleeping, is it the night if you're sleeping, even if it's the morning when you're having a dream? I always wondered that. So last night I had a dream, this morning I had a dream that I went to space, that I rode to space. It was the first time, though well, I've, I've probably been to space in my dreams before. It was the first time that I had a dream that I rode a rocket to space, I went to a private space station owned by Blue Origin, it was, this is the truth, and I went up there and I got to see the Earth from space. I have looked at Earth from space. I know what exactly what it looks like, I know how it feels, I got the perspective, it blew me away about the size, I was humbled. The, th the space station moves, because space stations move at over 17,000 miles per hour to stay in low, low Earth orbit, I think 17,500 miles per hour to stay in low earth orbit and I got to see the motion and I got to see how, how close the vastness of space was to me. Like I, 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 was, I was unnerved by that. I couldn't believe that this thin wall, relatively thin wall of the space station, what was, what, what was keeping space, I, I was almost in space, just one wall of a space station through a window and, and space was on the other side. But that's not even the best part of the dream, even though that's an amazing part, even though that part is awesome. The best part of the dream is this. This is my, this is, this is so great. All right, so the best part of the dream, uh, I gotta stop and tell you this. The best part of the dream is this. 
I talk about my mom all the time, right? I talk about how my mom passed. So she died mm, oh, oh, two years ago in two months. And I love her and she loved me and I had a great mom. And I had a dream last night with my mom. So when, you get, when you're grown up and you have someone who, 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 who dies and, and leaves, the greatest part about being a grown up is it, or, or you could happen when you're a student, is that those people visit you in your dreams. Like I've had the best of my dogs and the best of my cats, my best friend who passed away five years ago, all of them have visited in my dream and we've hugged. And I hugged my mom last night, this morning, in my dream for so long. And I mean, listen, I'm getting choked up telling you about it. Not because I'm sad, because I'm happy. Because my mom filled me with love. And, I, and that's part of the love that I share with you. That's why I'm able to do what I do, because of the love that that person showed to me. Not all moms are created equal. Not all dads are created equal. If we don't have a mom or dad who shows us the love that we need, and, and like for a time, I didn't have that dad. I went out and found that dad. And, I, and, and when my mom was unavailable, I found another mom. Her name was Patricia Canely. And in my dream, believe it or not, so we come back from the space, space like we, we fly, we get flown back, all the excitement, all the adventure. We get on a people mover, which is like a tram or a bus. There's three other astronauts on there with us. There's a driver who I've known since he was a kid and he grew up and he becomes a driver for Blue Origin, which I thought was a really cool part of the dream. And he gives me a hug and I'm like, oh my gosh, can we hug? It's COVID. And he's like, we're too close. We're, and he, we got a hug. So we practice a safe hug. And then I give a hug to my mom. And, and it was so great. And we just held on to each other. We were both so happy to go to space. And then my other mom, like I said, if you, if sometimes if you need a mom or if you need a dad, you can go and find one because there, there's seven and a half billion people on the planet. And there's so many people who love you, including me and Patricia Canely, who, when I was going through a tough time in college became my, my, uh, what would they call that? Um, my, um, my mom in good standing. She became like my fill in mom and, and I got to introduce my mom and Patricia Canely to each other. And we all had a three way big hug after going to space and seeing the earth from space and coming back safely. And it made me appreciate earth and life so much. And I woke up from that dream and I was so excited and energized and happy. And I'm happy to share it with you. And I hope you have all this awesome wonder in your life as well. And I want you to know that it's possible. That your dream life is as important as your regular life. Do you know that we spend a third of our life sleeping? So if we live to be uh, 90 years old, that means we will sleep for 30 years. So yeah, dreams are pretty important, I'd say. I've learned how to dream. And, and so I wrote all that down. Because I write my dreams down, I make a point of it. I use that discipline that we talk about sometimes. I've disciplined myself to write my dreams down. It enables me to remember my dreams. Like Raphael's sister, Iana, she says she never remembers her dream, but she's six. So she started to remember his, her dreams, but Raphael always remembers his dreams. And you can remember your dreams. And maybe you're one of the people who always remembers their dreams. And maybe you've had some amazing dreams too. If you had an amazing dream, feel free to send it to me. I, I would love to talk to you about your dream, including if it's a dream about you working, living, playing, and loving in space. That would be amazing. I'd be happy to, I'd be happy to share that with you. Wow, I think we, we lost signal there for a second. And uh, Gimbal, look, our robot lost power. I always wondered how long the battery life is on that. Now I know. But I have some, uh, I have some secret superpowers here to help out. First of all, I got battery packs. Secondly, I got battery chargers. Things happen and we, have, we get to prepare for them. And if you think for one second that that's taking away from any of my excitement for, for today and getting to talk with you and share with, share the excitement with you, you are mistaken. And I'm happy to, happy to correct you. Life is good. Bow, bow, bow. Let's see. Do I got this right? Life is good. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> Doing all kinds of exciting things today. Like, I, like I've got what people call analog equipment. Let me find, let me find my analog equipment. 
But this is the analog version of the gimbal. This is the non-robot version. We're going we're gonna to use it for, for our program today. And that's fine. I got gimbal recharging, so we, we can uh, get back into gimbal in a second. Oh, do I got this right? <laughs> like this. How are we doing now? <laughs> you know when they say nothing can spoil this day? Is this one of those days? Let's journey into the galaxy. Follow me on where you're thinking you were first. Let's travel at magnificent speeds around the universe. What could you say as the Earth moves further and further away? The planets as small as balls of clay. I stray into the Milky Way. It was out of sight as far as the eye can see, not even a satellite. Now stop and turn around and look. As you stare in the darkness, your knowledge took. So keep staring and soon you suddenly see a sun. You better follow it because it's the one. This is a lesson if you're guessing, if you follow in hurry, hurry, step right up and keep following the leader. That is a rapper named Rakim and he influenced me when I was you. So the poetry and art, art is really important when it comes to space. And that's why today's exercise about creating a postcard, you get to create the postcard. We are creating postcards that you get to send to space. It's going to get a stamp that says that your postcard has been to space and then you get, and then it's going to get mailed back to you. And I'm going to show you how to do it today. Thanks to Blue Origin. It was what a great program, huh? Now, Blue Origin works closely with United Launch Alliance, who I work with. And so I'm really happy to be uh, supporting Blue Origin and they support students. They, Blue Origin has a thing called, let's, let's set this up. Let's get this in game. Let's get this game in. Let's get this party started. Let's get this party started quickly. Nah, 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 nah. Here's Blue Origins. Uh, Blue Origins. It's a kids club for students. Now, if you're in the state of Florida, apparently the teachers, like you can write a postcard and the teachers will, you can hand it to your teacher and they'll send it to space. They'll stamp it and then you'll get it back, which is cool. This is a little different than that. I'm a little more excited about this particular program. So club for the future. If you go, if you Google club for the future, but you know, if you're in Florida, ask your teacher, how can you do that? Because they set it up with the state, which is cool, but it doesn't get mailed to your house club for the future. This gets mailed right to you from space. Like he goes up to space, comes back down to earth, and then they drop into the post office. Club for the future. Club for the future. That's what it's called. So you can Google club for the future. Blue Origins club for the future comes right up. I've been interacting with them for a while. Big fan of club for the future. Big fan of Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, look, he is probably the well, one, he's at least one of the wealthiest people in the world, right? And he's only done good for me. And I know for sure that there's people who have criticism about the way that he runs his company. I don't know about that. I believe it. I mean, like we all have challenges and if we didn't, life would be pretty boring. So the way that he runs his company is his challenge, but I can't create a company like that. That's not, that's not my gift. My gift is communicating with you and communicating with you that Jeff Bezos took his money and decided that what he wants to do is create a spaceship company. And that he has made a place for you to fit in and be part of the future. And out of all the people that are doing stuff with space, Jeff Bezos is the only one I know that's really doing that. United Launch Alliance has supported us, you and me, in getting apple seeds of space so that we can grow Johnny Appleseed space apple trees. And that is awesome. And nonetheless, Blue Origin is sending your postcard to space, putting a stamp on it that validates, that certifies your postcard has been to space and then mailing it back to you. We get to put a stamp on it, but it goes back to you no matter where you are in the world. How cool is that? I mean, that's the kind of thing that if I was you, I would want. And that's why I decided I got to make this video because if you don't know about this opportunity, it's my job as an astronaut teacher to let you know. So you take advantage of this opportunity while you're young, while you're you sometimes Depending on our age and where we are in life, certain opportunities are present that won't be present ever again in our life. And this is one of them. And I want you to take advantage of it. I want you to get this. And so I'm walking you through it today. I've got some stuff set up. We're going to get right into it. Are you ready? 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 
I can't hear you. You have to yell louder. <laughs> louder. Louder. Are you yelling at the television? <laughs> Good. That's the right thing to do. All right. So check it out. Let's let's get let's get into this. I got some stuff set up. We get down here. Let's see. I think I need oh jump into the lavatory really quickly get get some uh, scissors scissors are always pretty handy don't run with them and don't you know put them in this direction always put them in that direction and then I keep um, a measuring tool over here specifically for things at times when I need to measure stuff Now, here is my little setup. We're not making any mess, so I mean, I can. It's not gonna be like there's a little bit of mess, but that's that's okay. It's not like we're making. It's not like when we plant stuff and there's dirt on the floor, which I like doing, by the way. But I need a pen. Pen. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> Okay, look, I actually created, this is my postcard originally that we did once upon a time for Blue Origin. And then they asked for a space constitution. So my space constitution is the right to have air in space. This is our constitution. The right to exercise, because we got to be able to exercise. The right to enjoy ourselves along with work. So if we're up in space, we should be able to have fun too. So I always say, you get to live, work, and play in space. And then I put a, a stamp on it, like I told you about. So this is this is my test postcard. I didn't do it exactly right. Oh, but look, I got a template then, because I think it's the right size. Let's see, it's four by six. That's the right size. So this is four. That's six inches right there. Cool. And that's four inches right there. All right, cool. All right, so I got a template. That's awesome. Look. I got this cool picture. This I got this beautiful postcard from my friend Ann Flanner, and she found. Um, I'm trying to work through all the boxes of stuff. I found this. Thought you might like it. Hope you're well. Hugs, Ann Flanner. That's nice. And here's what she sent me. I thought it was really cool. This article from way back when I, like this is from 2013. There's me at a, at a conference with um, Jonathan Von Post. He's a he's a polyglot. He can understand a lot of a polymath. Polymath, that's him right there. And so this article is from 2013. And she sent that to me. She took the time to fold it up and mail it to me. That was really sweet, right? And so that's a treasure. So um, that's the card. Now People save cards like this, and sometimes I do, I guess, uh, but usually I'll recycle them and make something else awesome out of it. Like, won't this make a great postcard to go to space because it's a nice depiction of Earth? So all we have to, all we have to do is, so what we do is first, here, I'm gonna show you a trick. All right, so this is folded, right? So this is the way it really goes, and then I fold it the other way to loosen up this part right here, and then I, Draw my fingers against it. Now watch this. Here's the other part. So it's inside out. On the inside part, I take, I just, my tongue's wet. And I put a little bit of saliva on there, which, you know, probably freaks some people out, but you know, that's, this is my deal. And I'll show you what we do with it afterwards. Because it's COVID, it's the COVID area, era, area. So because that's wet, now I can just, Hair is really easy now. I don't go fast, you saw, and I still got the nice note that she sent me. It's like she sent me a postcard. And I got this awesome piece. This is nice and hard, which is what a postcard should be, but it's a little big. This is six and a half, six and five eighths inches, and four and three eighths uh, inches tall. So it's that, or because we can do millimeters, it is 
um, 122 milli millimeters. No, yeah, 122 millimeters and 177 millimeters. So that's that's uh, did I get that right? Yep, I love millimeters and centimeters. Jeez, they're so fun. I don't know why anybody had any issue with them. And, and, and so now we still get to work with issue with inches, which are a little awkward, but I can work with both. You'll get to work with both too, especially if you become an engineer with Blue Origin. A lot of times when you're an engineer and you get to work with these companies, it's um. Here, let's 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 make sure we got enough light. So a lot of times when you're when we're working with these companies, uh, we get to learn metrics, and metrics are important. So one of the things I can do, I know it's four by six. So then what I do is I go on here. I go to the four inches mark, which is right here. And then I go to the, no, the six inches mark. This is the long part. So I, I put the white tape in right here and then I get this end over here, six inches. Now I've got the tape lined up at the bottom. Can you see that? I got it lined up right nice and straight at the bottom. And then you can see the mark is right there, the six inch mark. I can do it over here too, up a little higher. Keep it straight and I gauge this against this edge so I can see with my eyeballs that it's straight. Here, I'll do it this way so you can see yourself. So I've got the end right here and then I've got this end right here. There's six and then four. Four inches tall. It's almost, it's, it's just a little longer than four inches right now. So, having two points is gonna be really important. I'll show you why. Okay, then I take a one human family sticker and use it as my line ruler. If you have a ruler, a ruler will work too, but you can use the edge of a, a piece of paper and then I make one point, I, I match them on the points, and then I draw a line. I match the edge of, the, of my straight edge to the points that I made, and then I draw a line. So you see the points I made right here is two points. And then I just draw, I just make sure that one point is right here, and another point is right here, make sure that they're both touching. Like if it, this is over here, if it's not touching both of them, it won't make a straight line. But when it touches both, it makes a straight line. And that is the outline for a postcard. Now we know this one's four by six, so let's see if it fits. Perfect, perfectly. That's nice. This is gonna be our postcard, my friends. And why am I doing this? Well, I guess you could buy a regular postcard. I like making stuff. I think that you probably like making stuff too. And I cut along the line nice and straight. You see, I'm not racing, I'm taking my time. Boop. There, so let's see, are they the same size? They sure are. Now look, we've got a postcard to go to space, okay? So, the instructions. The instructions at Club for the Future, I have them right here. Um, it says, can you see that? Use a four by six, a 10 by 15 centimeter postcard or download and print the template. On one side, draw or write your vision on why Earth needs space. So that's our printed side. On the other side, write your return address and add a stamp. Place the postcard in a stamped envelope and mail it to the club. If you have multiple postcards, place them in a large envelope or box and mail them to the club in bulk. That's like if you have a classroom, you can do that. It's pretty cool. And then drop the envelope in the mail. The club will launch into space on a rocket and re return it to you. So this is why. So we're at this. We've already made our postcard. And then we on one side, we draw or write our vision and why Earth needs space. Huh. And then on this side, we write our return address and a stamp. Okay, so check this out. So, I mean, we all know why Earth, like, I don't know what Earth needs space means. So, 
Um, I'll tell you what I know is that going to space is really important because look how beautiful Earth is. Like this is Earth. And this is worth preserving. This is worth taking care of. This is this is a painting, of course. So some someone was inspired by an actual by seeing this here on Earth. I mean, it's so beautiful that somebody was inspired to to reproduce it so they could show you it looks like it's poppies. So that somebody in the future could see it. That what they saw, what you saw. When you make art, it's what what you saw. If I make art, it's what I saw. So sending this picture to space of Earth is pretty perfect. Now, I don't know if there's anything I really need to add to it. I'll tell you what, I got an idea. Here's what I'll add to it. A dabbing astronaut. Isn't that appropriate? Isn't that perfect? <laughs> I hope this is what, what they had in mind when they said, make it your own. So I will make it my own. There's our dabbing astronaut in the middle of the field on Earth going to space. Very good, right? All right, so cool. So then on this side, well, this is the part that is really important because this is where your address goes so, Anna Stamp. So, let's get a stamp. Stamp, 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 stamp. Cool. Remember our stamps? We got some good ones. Look how cool they're metallic. And it, it's about, it's in celebration of the first moon landing. That's, that's pretty sweet. So, let's put an astronaut stamp on there. Deserves it, don't you think? Cool. All right. And then this is going to go. This is this is this is going to space. When it comes back to space, they're going to stamp it. And I'll show you what I mean by stamp it. So, as you know, we have our own symbol. Ooh. The mark of the, the insignia of the human heirs. And so I have an embosser that whenever I see you in person and I'm signing like your book or um, something important, I, I use this to put my seal on here. And this validates that this is from me. So, put a little pressure. This is probably gonna take a grown up to do because you gotta really squeeze it. And now it's embossing the postcard and I'll show you what it's doing. It makes it the official seal of Mike Mongo. This is the human air, human air official seal, Mike Mongo. It's cool, right? Look, it's you can it, like it makes a texture. I love that. So they they put a stamp. They probably got an ink stamp that they put on there. And then, so for me, all right, my um, uh, you write your address. I'm just gonna write. This one is gonna be for let's 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 make it for my son. All right. So like uh, we'll just put Raphael. Jones. That's what I call him. That's his superhero name, Raphael Jones. And then we'll send it to, he's in Key West, so I'll send it to my P.O. box in Key West. And this is where you would put your address, okay? So when it goes to space, they need to have this on here. So when it comes back, he's in Florida, Key West, Florida. When it comes back, it's got your address on it. So they just, they'll put their stamp on it, like I put my stamp on it, and then they will uh, send it to the address that you put on there, okay? 
So then um, we're, we're kind of ready. There is one thing that I would put, like I would put, um, um, I would put like deer, here, what are you gonna write? Deer, blue, origin. O-R-I-G-I-N. Thank you. Thank you for making kids, K-I-D, and then I think apostrophe S, kids, no, maybe, no, kid, yeah, no, no apostrophe, kids, dreams, come true. And then I'm going to write here, look, here's, here's our, here's our thing. We're going to write this hashtag, um, space is for kids. So look, check it out. Sweet, huh? Hashtag spaces for kids. <laughs> See, your postcard is going to be just as cool as this. No question. Like I did that just because I, I really feel good. And when you, when you make something and you feel good, it feels good. Look, you can see the embossed to the other side. Pretty cool, right? So this is what's going to go to space. Now, there's another part that's really important. I have a box of envelopes here. And I already pre, I, re, I, I have a pre-sorted envelope. I have an envelope ready to go. Because this is called a self-addressed stamped envelope, except it's not stamped. We're going to need a stamp. So since I put the astronaut on this card, I'm going to put the moon on this one because moons and astronauts go together. Now, if you're mailing from another country, you're going to need more stamps and that's okay. Don't sweat it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Like you mean, you might need two of these stamps, two on this one and two on this one. Don't sweat it. You got this. Here is the address. Club for the Future, P.O. Box 57595759, Kent, K-E-N-T, W-A stands for Washington, 98604. This is Club for the Future. This is the Blue Origin Club for the Future. And this is Mike Mongo, Los Angeles, USA, Earth. I mean, it's going to space, so I might as well put Earth on there, right? Makes sense. So this is, this is, this is how this goes. This postcard is going to go in here. And we seal it. Look, we seal it like this. This is how we used to seal postcards like this. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. So now I got that on there. Postcards in there. It's the right size. I already measured everything. And then I seal it. Well, it's supposed to be the right size. Cool. And then I seal it. Okay. Now, since this is our postcard and this is me and you, and we know who this is coming from, we're going to do something. One, one more thing. We are going to draw the insignia of the human air. Don't forget on your letter to Blue Origin, put our insignia, okay? Which is a heart with wings. And a star. This is our insignia. The mark of the human air. Got it? Just like here. Got it? See? That is the insignia. I drew that and then made it into the, this. I actually hand drew that. And then use the, send it away, and then they pr reproduce it for me just like that. And that's your symbol. You get to use that. I give you permission. You're a human heir, the next generation of space explorers from planet Earth, like a legionnaire or a millionaire. You're a human heir.
So we got our, this, I uh, look. And so because I licked it, you know, let's put it in the sunlight for a while and I'll let it sit there and make sure it disinfects. It's the, it's a pandemic, it's quarantine. We're, we're smart, we're thinking about other people, right? So, but a lot of, this is an old style envelope. In the new style envelopes, they don't have, um, they just, you don't have to look up, lick them. But sometimes I like to show you how we used to do it back in the, back in the past. And then even in the future, that's how we did it. So that's ready to go. We can drop that off and it's gonna be amazing. And that, and that is how we do it. I mean, how cool is that, right? That's pretty awesome. So I wonder what would happen. I mean, um, can we even go outside? I wonder if the, if the Wi-Fi will carry. I just don't even know. Let's, let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. So, so um, <laughs> let's walk into space. So you know how we do space, right? So I got my uh, goggles. Oh, no, I can do these. Watch. When we go outside. Just for other people's safety, for our safety and for other people's safety. So I don't have to wear a mask. So let me go here, take this. Super excited. Mailing this to the future, Club for the Future. Thank you, Jeff Bezos. Thank you, Blue Origin. And then we put it in the mailbox. Pow, pow, pow. Then put the postcard up. Boom. I mean, the, uh, <laughs> the mail flag. It says that there's mail in here. Got it? So that's how that works. And that's it. Now it's off and running. Mailman comes in the afternoon, so it'll be in there for a while. And, uh, and it's sunny in Los Angeles, so it's pretty warm. I'd let her let her be nice and hot by the time he by, by the time she or he gets here. And now we're back. And now we're back. Boom, boom, boom. And that's it. You and I did that together. And you can do that at, at, with at, with you can do that with your family. You can do that with your friends. You can do that with your sisters. You can do it with your brothers. You can do it with your cousins. You can do it with your grandparents. I mean, how cool! Your grandparents. You think that they don't want to send a postcard to space? I guarantee you that your grandparents want to send a postcard to space. Even if they say they don't, they do. Because there's a kid inside of us that is with us our entire life. Oh, look. Speaking of kids. Speaking of kids. Look, we got a slogan up here we've been using for a while. But we just kind of invented a new one. So space is for everybody. Switch that up a little bit, shall we? Because testing, testing, one, two, three, is this thing on? Here is here's really here's what it is for you and you and me. You and me. Space is for kids. Space is for kids. Blue Origin, space is for kids. That's the message. Let's get that out there. Because what's the point of training for space and being excited for space if kids can't go? We gotta make it so that we gotta make it so that the opportunity and possibility of kids going. That's why I'm here, because I know that we are getting ready to send the first kid in space. And how I know that is because I get to have conversations with NASA and Blue Origin and and SpaceX and uh um Virgin Galactic all the time about sending the first kids to space. Not first kid, not some kid who's overly wealthy, who has some special advantage, but somebody who's done the work. Remember Alyssa Carson, how hard she's worked to be the first kid in space? Like somebody like that. That's who we wanna to get to space. She's 19, so she's still a teenager. She could go to space this year and still be the, still be the first teenager to go in space. And she's well trained for it. Like you. You doing this exercise and sending your, your postcard to space, this is how you get started on your journey. It's little steps. 
I didn't automatically become an, ast an astronaut teacher 13 years ago, almost 14, year 14 years now, by just deciding that I'm an astronaut teacher. I got to do the work one step at a time. And then I got invited to the different conferences to speak about students, about kids, because grown up calls students kids all the time. Like I know there's some grown up students, but most students are kids. Most, 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 so you can say young students. So astronaut, uh, excuse me, spaceship companies and space companies and science companies contact me and interact with me about how to communicate with you because for some reason, grown ups forget what it's like to be a kid. Believe it or not. Don't even ask me. Don't get, don't get, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Because I don't think that any grown up really truly forgets what it's like to be a kid. And I got to tell you this other cool thing is that when we have kids in our life, you, when you're in our life, we rem you help us remember what it's like to be a kid. So that's, that's, that's what we're doing today. We did a, you did an amazing job. You're going to accomplish this. The video is going to be up shortly. You can replay it and do it as many times as you want. I don't care. I want you just to do it one time. You do it one time and I'm going to be proud of you. Be sure and take a picture of it and send it to me. You can send it to me at Mike Mongo Astronaut Teacher on Instagram. It's really easy. Uh, be sure and hashtag spaces for kids. Okay? Take a picture of your postcard and hashtag spaces for kids and hashtag uh, Blue Origin or tag Blue Origin in it too. And tag Mike Mongo Astronaut Teacher. And let's get this party started, right? Let's get this party started quickly. Let's get this space party started where we have a place in space for kids. Spaces for kids. Spaces for kids. Say it loud. Say it proud. Tell your friends. Spaces for kids. Most importantly, remind grown-ups. Spaces for kids. Like, what's the whole point? I mean, I know we get all these wonderful things about going to space and all this work that we we every advantage that we get by going to space. And trust me, we do not survive as a species or as a planet without going to space. I'm sure of that. So space is important. So like, uh, um, I think that maybe that's what they mean when they say Earth needs space. I don't know where they got that from, but it's like, it's like that Earth needs space. <laughs> so, space is for kids. That one is exciting. So uh, let's get, let's get, let's get kids in space. You can, you do the work and I'll help get you there. I'll open the door. You're doing the work and I'll introduce you to the people. Ask the people that I've introduced. Ask David who I introduced to Joe, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, this, this happened. I've got friends who I introduced, introduced to Jeff Bezos. I'm, I'm pretty proud of them. Trust me, I am. So, all right. My family, my friends, that's it. For, oh, that's almost it. <laughs> Wow, let's see. I got I got some messages on Instagram right now. You know, it's pretty cool live streaming because you get messages on the fly. Um, oh, <laughs> J J J Yadav J P Yadav. This is J. He asked me, "What's your salary?" I want to ask you a question. What's your salary? If you don't if you don't mind, only tell sir, or else it's personal. Leave it, sir. I'm sorry for asking. I mean, that's a, that's a fine question. Like, I got to tell you, Jay, here's the thing. I don't have a salary. Sometimes people pay me to do special, like sometimes the companies will pay me, they contract me to do special work. And sometimes I get grants and sometimes I have, uh, oh, you know what? So a lot of times grownups will send me, they'll go to MikeMago.com, click on buy Mike a tea and just, and, and do me a nice thing. That happens pretty regularly. That's really super kind when a grown up does that. Just clicks on and buys me a tea. Some, pe some people bought me more than that. That's super nice. And here's my, here's, so if you're, uh, by the way, a reminder, subscribe if you're, if you're watching on YouTube uh, or Facebook or whatever. I've got it on different places. And uh, so that's how uh, my salary, I, I make less than $100,000 a year. How about that, Jay? Does that, does that $100,000, I make less than $100,000 US a year presently. That's a, that gives you an idea. I work. It works out great. I've got to a place that's pretty good and exciting in my life. It's paying for its own way. I do a lot of different, a lot of different stuff to keep things going. Um, sometimes I sell t-shirts. Sometimes I sell this on t-shirts, the insignia, and that helps. And uh, sometimes I do fundraisers. And uh, sometimes people pay me to, uh, well, in the, in the before, before the pandemic. And, and you know that we started this whole spaceship studio, this whole thing for... The pandemic, quarantine is space mission training. Before the pandemic, people would pay me to fly to schools and, and uh, talk with students. And now they now uh, people pay me to do Zoom calls. So 
six of one, six of the other. And then uh, Rishi, wow. Rishi likes uh, talking and thinking about, let me think. Well, Rishi, I had a dream where people travel to space like how we currently travel to space. In my dream, people had set up businesses and trading work is taking place with aliens where the world has a leader who interacts with the other leader where I was a normal citizen roaming around with excitement. I could see uh, uh, un, unidentified flying objects in the air. So like spacecraft that he couldn't recognize. I thought I was buying a ticket to space and then the dream ended. So he was buying it. He was getting ready to go to space and the dream ended on spaceships that he had never seen before. Uh, and so there's a difference between a like, UFO is like nothing. And the un uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon, that's a kind of cool thing. UAP, unidentified aerial phenomenon. I like that because it could be anything. And then a spaceship that we don't recognize that we call UFO, that's even more exciting because that's a real spaceship. So if you look at, at uh, some of the launches of the spaceships are, that we're sending up right now, people confuse them for, for uh, alien spacecraft, which I think is hilarious. We really are in this part of the universe, we're in this part of the uh, Milky Way, our solar system. It's kind of what people call the backwater. We're way far away from anything, from any main part of the, of the universe or galaxy. And so since it's so far away from one place to another, there's a good chance that, that uh, we don't find another civilization, another species of human beings for thousands of years even. Maybe a thousand years. We're moving pretty fast now, as long as we take care of ourselves. But we get, we get to go to space right now to figure out how to take care of ourselves and take care of our planet. Because if we solve for space, we solve for Earth. Maybe that's what they mean when they say uh, Earth needs space. So when we solve for space, we solve for Earth. We can solve all the challenges we face on Earth by solving for space. And that's why I'm having this conversation with you. Because I believe that's, that's what's going to happen. You are going to solve all the challenges we face on earth by solving for space. You are. Even if you solve one challenge about going to space and that we bring it to help with problems on earth, imagine how much impact that's going to have on the world. That's why I support you and I believe in you. You're worth it. You might be the most important person in the entire world in the whole future with just one good idea. Or maybe it's you and your friends. Maybe you've got a friend. Maybe it's you and your girlfriends, maybe it's you and your boyfriends, maybe it's you and your cousins, maybe it's you and your brothers and sisters, maybe it's you and your sisters and brothers, maybe it's you and your aunts and uncles, maybe it's you and your moms and dads, maybe it's you. It usually takes a team. And I'm here to support that dream, that vision for you. And that's why you're here, because you're awesome. And I know it. Thanks for being with us today. In case I haven't told you yet, I love you. I love you. Believe that. Look inside yourself. Find love. Know how that feels for you. And that's how I feel about you. And then go and express that with the people in, you life that, in your life that you love. If you have a pet. If you have a tree. If you have, if you have mm, a pet tree that you love. Let that, tree, let that pet tree know that you love it. And, if, and in particularly if you have somebody who is a person in your life that you really care about. Let them know that you love them. Okay? That'll make all the difference in the world to me. And that is one of the ways we'll solve all the challenges on earth by sharing how much we love one another. Okay, keep up the good work. In the words of our people, 